Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, we have so many things to uh, talk about, but I think the most important thing that I want to get to first is the Court of Criminal Appeals. Texas is a weirdo state, and most states, I think 40, 48 of them, don't have this. Um, it's it's like a Supreme Court, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but what is its jurisdiction? What do they do exactly? So- so there, we're very, you are, we are a little weird. I think there's only one other state like us that has a bifurcated system where half, the, well, the, some of the cases go to the Texas Supreme Court, all the civil cases. And if you have a, on your final appeal it, for a criminal case, it's the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. So it's split. And most Texans are not aware of this nine member court that is all Republican. And most Republicans, even the most educated, don't know who's on that court. So this is becoming very, very important, and especially, and you'll know this in really deep red states, uh, states like Utah, just because it says Republican does not mean they're Republican. In Texas, a lot of times, Democrats just switch to Republican uh, because they know they can get elected with an R behind their name. And then you also have these horrible Republicans who are you know, uh, Republican in name only, as we know to be rhinos. Um, And that's who's really on. There's some that are are good, but there's a few of these guys on this court. And it is stopping the attorney general's office now from prosecuting any kind of election fraud, which is a new thing, is it not, Ken? Uh, Yeah. So this statute was passed by the legislature legally under their constitutional role to pass legislation and direct the attorney general to do whatever they wanted to do. And they did that in 1951. We prosecuted, literally, we had almost a thousand cases being prosecuted when they struck this down two years ago. Uh, It was suddenly struck down out of the blue, and they made the argument that it was unconstitutional, violation of separation of powers, because I'm in the executive branch, for me as attorney general to be in court. If they're right, every every, uh, court Prior to them, every case, really every attorney general in the country is violating the Constitution and has since the founding of our country. If this nine-member court that voted 8-1 suddenly out of the blue to strike this uh, law down. How did that happen? I think, honestly, it's it's nine members. Nobody knows who they are. We have one good one, Kevin Urey, and they waited till two days after the filing deadline two years ago to run against them. So we could not uh, put up candidates last time. So they, they got a two, two year pass. They thought we'd forget about it. They thought they'd have me out. And because George Soros has put his DAs in the liberal counties, I believe he is funding, along with uh, a, a group called Texans for Lawsuit Reform, funding yeah. these candidates to ensure that we can't prosecute voter fraud in Texas. Okay. So um, there were, there's a three prong approach going on here in Texas to turn Texas blue. The first thing is George Soros coming in and getting the DAs in all of the big counties. Um, The second thing is get rid of our attorney general and get somebody that won't fight back. And the uh, third thing is the Court of Appeals. And I could I could probably flip those last two and make the Court of Appeals and then coming after you and trying to get you out as the uh, as the 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 final step. Um, They've already got now the first step done. They have the Court of Appeals now. They failed on getting rid of you. But th- if this doesn't change in the Court of Appeals, you can't bring up any uh, fraud charges for anything in Houston, Dallas, or wherever it is. But these main uh, DAs are the only ones that can bring up fraud charges. Well, if they're Soros people... That's not going to happen. And, and what- they are Soros people. I've watched, I watched Soros unelect Democrats that were prosecuting all kinds of different crimes. He came in and put progressives in who won't prosecute much of anything, including voter fraud. So they've got that piece in place. I believe right now they have quarter criminal appeals in place, and they're coming after me again. I have another trial just like Trump in April that has been sitting there for nine years, and the quarter of criminal appeals moved me out of my home county, which is Republican, to Harris County, which is Democrat. And Democratic judges all the way up, and obviously Democratic jury. And why did they do that? Because after nine years, they decided they still need to get rid of me. 
because the impeachment didn't work. The election, the attempted uh, knocking me out in the election and even having the federal government come after me, none of that's worked. It is it is amazing to me, this this legal warfare. And I, I heard about this maybe eight years ago that they were starting to look into ways to go against uh, anybody who stands against them with the court system. And I thought, well, that's interesting, but we'll, you know, we have, you know, we have judges and we have juries and everything else. It doesn't matter if they pick the court, it doesn't matter. That's exactly right. And think for this, for these criminal cases, they've moved me into, they moved me into Harris County where my chances are much less at winning and especially, with a, you know, if we have a Democratic jury pool and Democratic judges and then the Court of Criminal Appeals has the final say, uh, I would say my chances aren't very good. I think they've done the same thing to Trump. They put him in very liberal places like New York or Fulton County where the process is slanted against you heavily. And it makes it and it's also obviously very expensive. Trump has resources that I don't have. So that's the other thing. They they try to drain you financially so you yes. cannot fight. And unfortunately, it's not just the Democrats. This is the Karl Rove, you know, slash Bush wing of our party. And it, it, it involves the, the Dick Weeklies of the world with Texans for Lawsuit Reform and other liberal groups that seem like they're Republican, but they're, they're, not, they're not on our side. So the Texas for Lawsuit Reform, correct me if I'm wrong, used to be uh, conservative. It was a conservative group. But yes. now the billionaires are involved, and Dick Weekly is one of them. He's a construction guy, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he and Carl Rove and uh, another guy, um, gosh, what's his name? Uh, Dennis um, Calabrese. Calabrese. Um, these three kind of really make the meat of the Texas lawsuit reform. One goes out, raises a lot of money. A couple of them do, actually. Uh, the other guy is the strategist. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't Calabrese, didn't he go? He was part of the no bail uh, action, wasn't he? Yeah. So he was helping work uh, the, uh, I think it's called the Truman Foundation. Oh, no, Arnold Foundation. Yeah. It's a very progressive group on criminal matters. And he was working with them until he was accused of tax evasion, went to federal prison, but then he also was sued by the Arnold Foundation for taking some of their money, and uh, there was a judgment against him for, I think, $8.5 million. And then suddenly that judgment gets paid, and he's back working with Dick Weekly and Texans for Lawsuit Reform. So, who paid that, yes, who paid that eight, $8.5 million judgment? I have no idea. It was mm. all... Uh, Maybe it was uh, Hunter Biden's art you, friends. You can, always, uh, you can guess. Yeah. Okay, so he goes back to work... Now, he's for embezzlement. He's a, a criminal for embezzlement. He was part of the move to get all of these, uh, all the bails dropped. Why is a so-called conservative group and conservative like Dick Weekly? why are they bringing him in? Well, that's a good question, except if you look at where they're headed now. I mean, they've, they've focused on taking out Republicans. They tend to fund now. They'll they'll fund Republicans, but they give them so much money that they're beholden to them. And they're not necessarily a conservative group anymore. Their original purpose was to stop lawsuit abuse. And now they branched into all kinds of things. They're supporting, they're putting millions of dollars behind uh, the speaker who's controlled by the Democrats. And then he, they, they give all of, uh, all of his people, you know, millions of dollars and they control the Texas legislature. And it ends up not representing the voters because now the voters don't, they don't even need their money. The, the House members don't even need their money because so much of it's coming from Texans for Lawsuit Reform and a group called ART, Associated Republicans of Texas, which Carl Rove is very involved with. So they're, they're, they all work together. Carl Rove, we know him uh, quite well. He's, uh, he's always a great helper. Um, all right. So who are the judges that are going up for election this year? And this is going to be a tough one because nobody knows what the Court of Criminal Appeals is. When you look at judges... You don't know, you don't know how who these judges are. Nine out of ten times, and people will look and they'll go, "I don't know. It's a Republican. Uh, it's an Independent. I, I don't know. I'll vote for the." And you just guess. So you got three That's people exactly right. coming up, and Texans have got to know these names. That's exactly right. I think this is the most important election I've ever been involved in. I mean, even my election. These three judges, if we can't turn this court, 
we will not be able to prosecute voter fraud, and we will be Georgia, we will be Arizona, we will be Wisconsin. We will have the same result. I was able to stop that with my great team last time, but this, this is where we're headed in the next couple of years if no one that cares about voter fraud actually gets to prosecute it. And so Gina Parker, the three people that we want to elect, Gina Parker, Lee Finley, and David Schenck. And I'm going to repeat them one more time. Gina Parker, David Schenck, and Lee, fin- Lee Finley. And, and it starts, voting starts February 20th, which is this coming Tuesday, early voting. And March oh, 5th is the, uh, is the final election. So this is really critical that people on your show from Texas spread the word. And if you're not from Texas, realize if we don't hold on to Texas, I mean, we are in trouble nationally. We can't win elections nationally. This is the number one thing that people say to me, you know, Glenn, if we can't go after voter fraud, if we can't clean it up, and I mean clean it up on our side if there is any or their side, just fair voting. If we can't prosecute this, if we can't go after it, then we have no trust in the elections. And how do you have a republic? Well, you don't. You don't. In Texas, this is is the solution to this. If you can get three people, Gina Parker, Lee Finley, and David Shank, if you can get those three onto the board of criminal appeals, court of criminal appeals, there's a chance that this thing can be overturned. And the attorney general, didn't you have almost like 400 cases of voter fraud here in Texas going on? So we had over 600 counts that we were prosecuting at the time they struck it down. All those got dismissed. We had a 392 investigations that got, had to be halted because of this decision out of the blue with no, you know, totally surprising us. So, no, we are not prosecuting. There's not a single case that I know of in Texas now being prosecuted, not a single voter fraud case by a single DA in this in this state. Maybe there's one, maybe there's two, but I can guarantee you they are not. Nav- this is not being prosecuted in Texas anymore. God, that's bad. That's yep. really bad. That's really bad. But we can fix it. If this election goes the right way, then it'll, we'll still be down 5-4, but we'll be sending the message to the legislature, fix this, and the Court of Criminal Appeals will realize we're coming to get the next ones if they don't fix this decision. Well, the same money behind these guys, if this is accurate, would be the people behind the uh, Speaker of the House, who is just a nightmare. A nightmare. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you're going to see money spent on these races for the first time by the other side. And because they know that we're getting the word out. And so you're going to see these TV ads supporting these incumbent Texas Court of Criminal Appeals judges. We've, I've never seen money spent in these races, but we're going to see it. And Texans for Lawsuit Reform and other groups affiliated with them are going to be involved. Stu, we need some something like a jingle for Gina Parker, Lee Finley, and David Shank. We, <laughs> like need, some, we need something. I don't know how. I don't know how you make those names stick, but we need a jingle that we can play every day. I'll work mm-hmm. on it. Yeah, you'll okay. work on that? Good. Okay, good. We'll work on it too, Ken. I don't know how. You, as an audience, can somebody come up with something catchy that helps people remember? Because you've got a week. You've got a week to do this.